So it's kind of like we're gonna we're gonna see like a, a game that I call um, mystery toggles. We're gonna see this mystery toggles game, mystery toggles, and it's kind of like a twenty questions kind of game. So it's uh, you know this twenty questions. There's like a secret, and like you have to ask like a bunch of questions, and like you want to figure out what the secret is. And you're trying to ask as few questions as possible. Okay, so I've got like a this is a subroutine in Scratch, right? It's called mystery toggles, and uh, right now it has some uh, code in it, some quantum code of this type, and I, I'm going to promise you, like, this is actually the secret in our, like, 20 questions like game. Um, there's going to be, uh, oh, this code is always going to act on um, six qubits called x1 through x6. Instead of ABCD, I call them x1 through x6. And there's, like, one more qubit called answer, but I just abbreviated it as ANS. Okay, so there's actually in this code, uh, there's always going to be seven qubits, x1, x2, x3, up to x6, plus answer. And seven qubits is fine. My, my little scratch guy can easily simulate that. Um, okay, and this uh, mystery toggles code, it's always going to have a special format. It's always going to look kind of like this. So you see here, we only have these instructions. If x1, then toggle ants. If x3, then toggle ants. If x4, then toggle ants. If x5, then toggle ants. Okay? And mystery toggles is always going to look like this for some... Um, subset of like the six possibilities, okay? Like it might contain, I'll show you what it could contain. This is like the maximum it could possibly be is if it looks like this, whoops. Whoa, that's too much. Um, oops, x4, let's put this away, x5, x6. Okay, this is the most it could be. It might look like this. If x1, then toggle ants. Think about what this is doing, by the way, in the back of your mind as I'm, I'm talking. Uh, or it might contain a subset of these instructions. So it might contain just like, um, whoops. It might just contain the first five. Or like maybe it'll contain none of them. It'll contain zero of them. Or like maybe it'll just contain, I don't know, x2 and x3. Okay, so uh, since there's six x's, Right, there's uh, 64 possibilities for what this mystery toggles could be. To the power of six, any subset of the six things could be in there. And like in this game, you're gonna have to try to guess like which of the six, or sorry, 64 possibilities it is. Okay, so uh, the way it's gonna work is like I'll pick one of the 64 possibilities, and then um, you're gonna have to like guess what's in there in this code by making calls to this function. Okay? And every time you call this function, that's like asking a question. That counts as like one question. And like, you know, in 20 questions, you're trying to figure out the secret while minimizing the number of questions you ask. Okay? So uh, I'll set it up with some mystery toggles or 64 possibilities. And then you can make calls to this and try to figure out what is the code inside. That's the game. Okay, so uh, let's kind of play it. But in order to really play along, like, you know, you're not supposed to know it's in mystery toggles. So, um, Okay, so everybody close their eyes. We'll do this for like 20 seconds. Okay, ready? Uh, so close your eyes. Go. I'm going to like quickly put some toggles in here. Um, what should I put in? I'm almost done. Okay, hopefully. No, that's good. Okay, you can open your eyes. Okay, good. Okay. So mystery toggles, I set it up. It's got one of the 64 possibilities. Maybe I put nothing in there. Maybe I put everything in there. You don't know. Okay, so we got to make uh, calls to it and try to figure out what's in there. Um, so this is like my, my, let me zoom out a little bit. This is my, oh, I don't want to reveal what it is by zooming out. Let's put it like this. Okay, this is my like mystery toggles code. And, um, okay, it's really long, but it's just because I didn't implement the feature of like allocating all the variables in one shot. So like, um, you know, as I said, you're going to try to figure out what's inside by calling this, like, mystery toggles. And uh, so obviously, you, you know, you should allocate all the variables that, um, it's so small. Let me, let me, let me try to do this. We don't even really need this. Okay. So let's, okay, so we got all the, the variables allocated here. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to make calls to mystery toggles to try to figure out what's inside there. Um, so let me do this. I'm gonna like um, I'm gonna execute this code right here. Just I'll give you this one for free. Okay, this one's not charging you. This is like a demo. What if I just like ex execute mystery toggles 
and then, you know, extract all right now. This is actually quite a bad idea, because, uh, well, somebody tell me, what will it print out? Yeah, it will print out all zeros. Yeah, see, so yeah, if you can read it, zero, 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 zero. Because all the variables, when you initialize them, are all zero. And then in that mystery toggles, whatever it is, like it's doing the if this then toggle, if this then toggle, but they're all zero, so nothing gets toggled. So answer stays zero. You sent all in the qubits as zero, so like it's just gonna stay all zeros. Okay, so that was, that was like a dumb question, but don't worry, that was your freebie. Okay, I always have to make sure I restart or otherwise it'll screw up. So, uh, okay, let's, let's do this. So let's run this. This is like a much smarter question. This is a good question. So what I'm gonna do is, after I allocate all the, the qubits, uh, I'll toggle x1. Okay, so now x1 is one. All the rest of them are zero. Now we're gonna run mystery toggles. Okay, so think in your mind about like what, hap what might happen. Okay. And now we're gonna do it. We're really gonna spend a question here by running this code. So uh, here we go. Okay, so what came back? One, that makes sense, because we set x1 to one, right? So let's say one, zero, 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 one. Okay, so answer came back as one. So actually now we, I claim we know some stuff about like what secret instructions I hid inside mystery toggles. So what fact did we learn here? Yes? Yeah, maybe I'll even write this on the board. So like we kind of now know, um, yeah, I can erase this. We kind of now know that uh, if x1 is in there, because otherwise how did answer get toggled to one? I mean, uh, answer came back one, Every, all the other x's, all the other controls were zero, so it, it must have uh, if x1 in there. So. Okay, so uh, now what should we do? Well, this seemed good, let's do this. Let's just toggle x2 and then run mystery toggles. Okay, so let me restart it. Okay, so everything is zero now. Now I'm gonna toggle x2 to one, run this mystery toggles, extract all, and let's look what happens. Okay, we got zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so answer came back zero. So now what can we infer? That's right, there's no x2 line, because, you know, everything else was zero, uh, but x2 is one, but answer came back zero, so it didn't get toggled, like, its only opportunity to get toggled was based on x2, but it didn't get toggled. So x2, this line with x2 couldn't have been in there. Okay, so actually, at this point, how many possibilities are left? Uh, 16, yeah. There used to be 64, right? Because there were six possible toggle instructions, so like there's, uh, each one could be either in there or not in there, so that's two of the six is 64. Now we know this one is in there, this one is not in there. Um, so there's two to the four possibilities left. There's 16 possibilities left. So we've made good progress. We've narrowed it down to 16 possibilities. A any questions right now? Okay, now we can do whatever we want. Let's restart this. Oops, okay. Um, let's say we do this, x3, x4. I mean, we can do whatever instructions we want. It only costs us like one question when we call mystery toggle. So I'm gonna execute this block of code. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm gonna do it. Okay, I did it. So that was our third question. And let's see, I toggled x3 and x4, so they're both one. And then answer came back zero. So we did actually learn something here. Can somebody articulate what we learned from this? Yeah? Yeah. You see, I mean, basically there were two possible toggles, and answer came back zero, which either means it got toggled never, or it got toggled twice. So it could be that, like, maybe, um, maybe both are in here, or maybe neither, both like the x2, x, x3, and x4 are in here, or maybe neither. So on one hand, it doesn't feel like I did such a smart question there, because like this was real great information that we like understood, we were making progress. This seems kind of less good. Although, is it so bad? 
For example, actually, does anybody know how many possibilities are left? There used to be 16. Yeah, you want to say? Yeah. Eight, yeah, you have to think about this a little bit, but actually, once you know this, it kind of effectively narrows down half of the remaining possibilities, right? Like, uh, there's four possibilities for how this looks before, now you cut it down to two. It actually narrows it down to half. Actually, if you think about it, it's actually kind of an equally good question. Um, there's eight possibilities left. And now, for example, if we're gonna do like the simple thing, like let's say we're gonna do the simple thing, and like say like, all right, now I'm gonna ask about x3, in a very plain fashion, whoops. Let's say I was gonna run this code, where I just like toggle x3, and then do the mystery toggles. Let's do it. Actually, you see ants came back zero, which means that x3 is not in here, which also means x4 is not in here, based on our previous question. So actually, we now we know it's like no x2, x3, or x4. So, so far we made um, four questions. And actually, we just don't know about x5 and x6. So there's two, two possible instructions. So there's four possibilities left. And, uh, you know, I could do it like kind of, uh, like, I could do it like in a, like a tricky way. Like, I don't know, I could toggle x1 and x5 and x6 and like reason about the, the possibilities. But let me just do it in the most obvious way. So let me restart. And then I'll check x5. You see, uh, our answer came back one, so we know that actually x5 is in there. That was our fifth question. And let's do a sixth question. We'll, do, we'll check x6. Um, x6. Okay, and x6, uh, answer came back one again, so we know that if x, x6 is also in there, and now we know. Okay. So it took us six questions, but now we know exactly what should be in mystery toggles unless we screwed it up. And now, with your eyes open, check it out. Yeah, we got it right. X1, X5, and X6. So great. We did it. Um, one thing maybe you should think about, I think it's pretty intuitively clear. It's not very hard to prove, but. Um, you should think about it, is that like, if you have six of these x variables, then um, if you ask, uh, you cannot win, you cannot figure it out exactly unless you ask at least six questions. It's kind of easy to see, like every question, you kind of only get back like one bit of information, and you kind of need to figure out six bits of information. Um, so you, ha you cannot win this game unless you ask at least six questions. On the other hand, you can win the game if you ask six questions. You can do it in like some, slightly weird way, like the way we did it, or you could do it in like the most simple way where you just like, I'm just gonna only send in x1 is one and the rest are zero, then I'm gonna only send in x2 is one and the rest are zero, et cetera. Uh, okay. And if we play the same game with like 100 x's, like x1 through x2 through x100, then, you know, it'd be a similar situation where like you cannot win the game if you only ask 99 questions, if you only make 99 calls to mystery toggles, but you can win the game if you ask like 100 questions. Okay, so far, like, nothing quantum has happened, except that all of these seven variables, x1 through x7 and ants, happen to be qubits. But we didn't really, really use them as qubits. We just used them, like, or, like, in a very fancy way. We just used that they're, like, zero and one, you know? And we have, like, toggles and stuff. Uh, okay, but now, like, this is, like, the demo part. Like, I want to show you how, like, you can use, like, the power of superposition and this, like, fancy quantum instruction, Hadamard all to do something better. So uh, let's, let's make a new mystery toggles, why not? So I don't know, we'll make it one uh, x2, x5, x6, I don't know. Okay, so like if you didn't know that, and I was like, okay, time to play the game, start asking your questions, we kind of know that if you wanted to figure out that it was like one, two, five, and six, you would need six questions. <coughs> But okay, let's check this out. So let's restart this. Now, hopefully I remember how to do this code. Uh, so let's start out by, uh, let's start the code out by toggling ants, which seems like kind of a weird thing to do. Why would you do that? I mean, you can do it. Why would you do that? I don't know. 
Uh, and here's the instruction, how to mar it all. Let's do it. We don't even know what it does. I'm not going to explain what it does, but it does something quantum -y. That's what we'll find out in the next couple of weeks. OK. And now I'm going to do mystery toggle. So that's my one question. OK. And then uh, I'm going to do how to mar it all again for some reason. OK. And then I'll extract all. So this is the code I'm going to run in one second. Toggle ants, how to mar it all. Mystery toggles, that's my one question. How to mar it all, extract all. OK, let's find out what happens. Hopefully I did this right. OK, now actually something kind of weird happened. I don't, hopefully you can see it. Um, you know, initially when we sent it in, well, OK, at least at this point, before the, the quantum business, uh, all the x's were 0 and ants was 1. Now when it came back and it printed at the end, ants was still 1. So you're like, OK, that, that's fine. But like x1 through x6 like are now zeros and ones, which is maybe weird. I mean, you don't really know what this does, so maybe it's not weird. I don't know. But I like you to check out like which ones are zero and one. So like if you can see my mouse pointer here, like x1 is one, x2 is one, x3 is zero, x4 is zero, x5 is one, x6 is one. So we got ones in spots one, two, five, and six. And do you remember like what mystery toggles was? It was this. It was 1, 2, 5, and 6. OK? And that's not a coincidence. This, like, always happens. So, like, if you know that it's going gonna to work like this, then you see um, you can find out the entire contents of mystery toggles with just one question. You only called this mystery toggles one time. But you figured out everything that was inside it. OK? And this is, like, an example of, like, quantum advantage over classical computing. Because before, um, when you know, we didn't use the quantum instruction, like we saw that we would need at least six questions to solve this, we solved it with one, with the quantum instructions. And in fact, if there had been like 100 x's, it would have taken us 100 questions if we just used the classical type instructions with, the to uh, with like zeros and ones. But it still only takes one question with like a quantum qubits, quantum power. OK, so this is like uh, an example of like, you know, a uh, really tremendous like speed up you can get for some kind of problem uh, using uh, quantum computing. Now, uh, that's really cool. And uh, as I said, in the next couple of weeks, we'll figure out like why this works. And we'll also figure out like, can we use this, like, I don't know, this magic to do anything else, like, really cool? Because it's uh, actually arguably not that cool. Because, OK, that was like a neat party trick, you know? It was like a fun uh, demo and something. But what the heck is this problem? Like, what, what is this bizarre situation where, like, first of all, somebody tells you, oh, I wrote this code that has a bunch of, like, if x then toggle things inside it. And you've got to figure out what they are. Like, what, that's, what, that's weird, right? Like, I didn't want to solve that problem. So I'm not that impressed that, like, you can solve it. Also, like, what is this scenario? Like, I mean, here's, I can solve it with zero questions, right? I just, like, look at the code. And I'm like, oh, I didn't ask any questions. And there it is, x1, x2, x5, x6. So, like, what is this, like, weird scenario where somehow this is, like, a, you know, obfuscated black box. You cannot tell what's inside it, but you can still run it. It's, one struggles to imagine, like, a real world scenario in which this would be relevant. But, you know, it's still kind of cool. I mean, it shows that, like, something amazing is happening. And, uh, you know, the, in some sense, the goal of quantum computers is, like, let's try to figure out what other, ama other amazing things could happen. Maybe we can solve some more, like, cool and interesting problem that we actually wanted to solve, like, way faster using quantum computing. <laughs>